Welcome to another session of SAP UI5 tutorials. So in this session, we will be talking about project structuring in SAP UI5. So let's just go through it. So this is the agenda of this presentation here. So first we will be just looking at the sample project overview, what all folders and files are needed for a particular UI5 application. Then we will just see the concept of MVC that is model controller and views. And so we will just see what controllers and views are, then we will see CSS, how to implement CSS and images in our SAP UI5 project. We will also see models and internalization continued by mock servers, how component.js file helps us and the application descriptor that is the manifest.json file. So this is our agenda for this particular session here and we will just move on to project structuring overview. So you can see here, so this is the project structure. So I have created a hello world application and you could see the web application folder which contains this controller CSS I18 local service model test and view folders here and also the component.js index.html file, index file and manifest.json file and this web application contains all these folders and files and this hello world application contains the git ignore project.json neo app.json files. So basically there are three root fo three folders that is a root folder here hello world is a root folder and the web app is this is the folder so and the third is the test folder which is the optional one here it is so let's just explore what the root folder is so here i have this hello world which consists of this web app folder and these three files here so basically no coding is done in the root folder these are just for the project sex settings and all and then we have the web application folder here which consists of the controllers, CSS, I18 and all these other folders and files. So basically all the coding is done in these files and in these folders. And then we have this test folder. This test folder contains all the application files that is needed to run automated test, test for your applications. So for our standalone application we have this index.html file here and this index.html file is instantiated and then it, the controls goes to the component.js folder where all the metadata of the file uh, project settings are defined and then we have the manifest.json file which has this app descriptor of the project itself so moving on then we have the views and the controllers folder so in the view folder you can we place all the views and the fragments and all so basically what are views views are just the ui of the application so how the application should look and all it is defined in the views itself. So no logic is written in the views unless it is a JS view or something like that. If uh, XML view is used, so we only define the UI but no logic is defined. So if we are using the JS file and all for the view purpose, we could also write the logic in the view itself. So I mentioned the examples of views and fragments like if we have to create a fragment or a view, we place all these files in the view folder itself. And if we are also creating a nested view also, we also place all the nested views within the view folder itself. So I have just given an example here. These all are the examples of the views which are kept in the view folder. Now moving on to the controller. So controller are generally the logic of the application. We keep all the logic uh, in the controller folder itself. So all the controller files come in the controller folder. So here you could see. So these are the, all the controller files that are maintained in the controller file controller folder itself so the structure of the controller folder should resemble the view folder so there are around this many views so there should be this many controller itself so unless we are using a fragment so fragment doesn't have its own controller but all the views have their own particular respective controllers so we have maintained this controller here itself now moving on that is css and images so css are generally used to style the web pages and all the CSS files that is .css are kept in the CSS folder and in the images SAP Web ID supports different kinds of um, images that is PNG, G, JPG and GIF files. So these all files are stored in images folder itself. So here I have mentioned some of the examples here I have this images folder and within the images folder I have maintained all the images and within the CSS folder I have maintained all these CSS files. So now moving on. So here we have the model folder and within the model folder where you put any files needed for creating models and logic relating to the model data itself. 
so it includes this grouping filtering and formatting so here i have this model folder and within this model folder i have just kept a formatter.js grouper.js and model.js so any formatting is to be done we create a different file that is formatter.js and we place the co code in that particular file itself and that file is stored in the model folder and then we have the internalization that is if we are using for a global purpose that is globalization or if we are using in USA then the language would be English if we are using in Germany then language would be German so according to the need of the language the language of the application changes so we have the file for this so this is the folder i18 is the name of the folder and within the i18 folder we create this prop dot properties file so if it is an English file so we just name it as i18 dot en dot properties if, if it is a German file then we name it as i18 dot de dot dot properties so all these files are maintained in the internalization folder now moving on so then we have the mock server so mock server are nothing but just to emulate the odata service that we are getting so these are used just for the test and preview purposes so when the real server is not available we just create a mock server so so basically these are intended for design time tools and since it contains a metadata dot xml which are describe the backend connection of the application so basically we have this odata protocol so if we have this odata service we just add the dollar metadata uh, behind the odata service and we just get the metadata of the odata service so there are some files needed here metadata.xml mock server.js then we have this mock data where we create a json file mock data that we are creating the we kept keep in a particular json file and then we have the test here test folder within the test folder we create a test service.html file so we will just discuss about this in the other videos other sessions in dp so here i am just given the basic overview of the mock server now moving on so here we have the component.js file so component.js file is the component control and provide the runtime metadata on the and the component methods also so basically if a standalone application is used so we have the in, in index.html file from where the control moves to the component.js file so and the, here we are instantiating the component.js file in the index.html file itself so this is the uh, code snippet jquery.sap.declare and this is the uh, namespace samples and component.shell and dot component so this is the basic code snippet for instantiating or basi basically for de declaration statement and then we have to create the ui component and to create the ui component you have this particular code here sap.ui dot ui component dot extend so this is the code here that we need to extend so basically we are creating a ui component and this is the mm, namespace this is the shell and this is the component file itself component file name should be there now moving on to the app descriptor so this is app descriptor means the manifest.json file itself so basically it is all it is only supported after the 1.28 version of sap ui5 that was released so before that we used to write the code of the manifest.json file in the component.js file itself that is routing and all we mention in the component.js but after the release of manifest.json file we used to uh, we are used to writing the code of our routing and navigation in the manifest.json file so basically all the application specific configuration are maintained in the manifest.json file here and this for uh, this basically written in json format and we have this three namespaces we just used to mention in the manifest.json file that is sap.app sap.ui sap.ui5 so let us just see all these steps through a practical demonstration so let's just look at the project structuring in sap ui5 application so i will be using here sap web id so let's just start i have already opened this web id to see the project structuring here what we will do we will create a new project from the project template so go to new and then click on project template so if you want to add the manifest.json file you have to just click on sap ui5 application and from this menu here you have to just select sap ui5 innovation which is the recommended so if you don't have to include manifest.json file in your project structuring 
so just click on SAP UI5 1.8 version so here I will be using manifest.json which is the recommended one so I will just click on it and click on the SAP UI5 application template here go to next I will just provide a project name here I will just use new project so I will be required to give a namespace I will just write it as something random com dot new project so that's done I will click on next so now it takes me to initial view details so first view would be view 1 I will just click on next and then finish so that's simple so now we will see the project structure of the new project if I just click on this and this would be the my root project root folder here so the root folder should contain all the files that are not the part of your application coding so example like this project dot json file and new dot new app dot json this would contain the welcome file which file should load the first index.html or something else so all these information are kept in this particular files so I'm just closing those so this is this particular folder is my root folder and then comes my web app folder so the web app folder consists of controller CSS I18 that is internalization folder models all the models that we will be using here and the views component.js index and the manifest.json file so just look at the views here first the view that we created was view1 so this was view1.view.xml file so in the view folder you should put all the SAP UI5 views and all the fragments etc if you are creating any nested views those also should come in the view folder all the UI that is this folder should not contain any application logic unless you are using any JavaScript files JavaScript views so in JavaScript views you could use any logic but in XML views you could on, uh, only write the UI code part only and then come to controller so every view has its own controller so its controller is in the controller folder here view1.controller.js all the controllers are written in JavaScript so so all the logic behind a particular view is written in this particular controller file so this was about views and controllers so then comes the CSS so CSS generally has this particular file named as style.css this is the default name that we use and this is the recommended one also so CSS, CSS could be used within the code or a separate file could be maintained so if you are maintaining a separate file so it should come in the CSS folder then then we have this i18 and model so model folder is where you put all the files needed for creating the models and logic related to model data so basically we if we are using any formatter.js file or models.js file so all these should come in the model folder and then comes i18 which is the internalization folder so um, any properties that we are using here the default one is i18 and properties so by default it takes the English one and we, if we are creating some other i18 files something like German so instead of en de should come so respective i18 files are maintained in the i18 folder so that's about controller CSS i18 models and views so now for the mock service that is the mock server we use two folders that isn't created here we have to create it externally so two folders are local service and test folder in in the local service there are four files or basically three files in the local service we maintain a mock data folder and within the mock data we we have our JSON files and apart from this mock data we have this metadata.xml file and the mock server.js files and apart from the local service we have this test folder 
and within the test folder we keep our mock server dot html file so I am not just creating here anything like that but in this respective lesson I will be going into detail so that's it about the local service so now we come to a component.js file so basically if you see the index.html file here so once when we start up when we run our program any application the first page to load is index.html so the flow is something like this the index.html page gets loaded and within the init function we are attaching a shell here and from this our controller uh, flow goes to the component.js file so for a particular standalone application we only use index.html we don't use component.js file but here we will be using a component.js file so component.js file is a component controller and provides the runtime metadata and com component methods and here we could see this portion is getting extended so to create a UI component you need to extend the UI components base class and to pass it the name of the new component and its package path so here is the path here so this is the namespace that we created and here is the component that we are writing, writing here okay now comes the manifest.json I previously told you manifest.json file is supported only after the 1.28 version so if you are you have to use uh, using manifest.json file you have to write here manifest.json only then the control will go to the manifest.json file now let's just look at the manifest.json file here here it is so it is sometimes also co called as app descriptor file since all the relation um, project settings uh, related to the application are kept in manifest.json file so you could see here basically three namespaces defined here sap.app, sap.ui and there is one more sap.ui5 so in the sap.app namespace which is this one here it contains the title we could see here and the des description and all the i18 properties are also already mentioned here and in the UI namespace we could see the technology uses UI5 version is this this and icon device types all everything is mentioned here even the supported themes are also mentioned so all these things come by default in web ID you need not worry about this code here and the third namespace is sap.ui5 here you would see the version the main one is this root view and you could also see the dependencies written here content densities and here you could see the models all the models that we are defining since here we have defined i18 so we have defined it here models if you are defining any other json file you could just write some uh, other piece of code for that particular json file and one more thing here we will be using here is routing so routing code will be written here if we are using the manifest.json file so we could use uh, write the routing portion here itself of if we are not using the manifest.json file we could write the code for routing in the component.js po portion so I think you are clear with the project structuring of the SAP UFI application all these files are mandatory if you are going to um, build a basically according to the SAP UFI guidelines so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.